you um, a component that, uh, kind of a, a dummy component that I made, which consists of a, an optical input port on the left. Uh, so the light comes in, and then the idea here is that this is supposed to be a, a splitter. So the light comes in from the left. This is a nanotaper, so the idea is that the mode will start expanding as it travels down this little waveguide. And then some of it should couple evanescently to these other nanotapers and then come out of these two other ports. Uh, so this is not a, a, a good design. What's, what's good about this design is it's very small, so it allows me to demonstrate this kind of real time. I made this extremely compact so that the simulations run quickly. Um, so the requirements for, I guess, but, you know, in the components in terms of for, uh, that, that we have in the library are that we have this layer here called the device recognition layer. Uh, so the device recognition layer basically defines where the, the component uh, extent is. Uh, we, of course, we have our silicon uh, geometries. And then finally, we have these things called pins, or and we label this as, as pin rec. And you can see that there are uh, there are labels here: opt one, opt one, two, and opt three. So this is a three-port device. And so what our objective is: how do we uh, take this structure and uh, export it to FTD for for circuits for component simulations? And um, so what we've actually done is made this easy for people by uh, the, some of the scripts that I showed in Photonic Components, we've imported those scripts into KLayout. And so KLayout uses Python, but we can take those scripts and then send them over to, um, to Lumerical FTD. So the menu item here is called Component FTD Simulations for S Parameters and Create a Compact Model. Um, and when you click on this, this is a bit of a mess, this GUI. I, I didn't spend too much time on this, but this is a laundry list of some of the parameters that, that I thought are important. And so. Specifically, in the first week, we talked about convergence testing to make sure your answer is accurate. So I include a, a, a simple convergence test in the script. I'm going to disable that to make it go faster right now. Um, we can think about boundary conditions, um, number of modes. So the design competition asks people to design a component that's suitable for both TE and TM. Um, so this, uh, I tried to write this so that we can simulate both modes. So you can either put in one, two, or one and two. I'm just going to show you with the T polarization. Um, and something else that I'm going to do is to speed up the simulation right now is mesh accuracy. So typically, for a pretty high accuracy result, uh, I use mesh, ac mesh accuracy 4. Uh, but for this demonstration, I'm going to use mesh accuracy 1 so that it can go really quickly. OK, so, uh, so basically, these are all the parameters that are going to be used to configure my simulation. Um, and oops, let me try that again. Uh, I, had, I was in the wrong cell. Uh, okay, hopefully my, my parameters, oh no, they disappeared. Okay, that's too bad. Let me put these back in again. Okay, so what this is doing is it's launching. You can see FTDD is bouncing up and down here. So it's, it's launching FTDD, and then it's going through uh, a script that essentially takes all the polygons that are defined in K layout, draws them in FTDD, and every port that we've defined, it also injects, it creates one of these ports um, at the uh, on, on all three um, on all three pins defined in the layout tool, so we're using the the object called port, um, which is which essentially consists of a source as well as a detector or a monitor. A, a fast FTD simulation where it's swept um, as a function of uh, of wavelength, and it gives us the transmission from this is S three one, so I think this is injection. Injection in port one, measurement on port three, and then S21. Uh, so you can see this device is not very good as I, as I preface the discussion. Um, we can see we're getting about a 6 dB, 6, 7 dB insertion loss, but I think it illustrates the concept that you can go from a, from a, uh, a, a, you know, a top view of a device drawn in the layout tool, extruding the structure into a three dimensional structure configuring the FTD uh, environment, including the, the uh, perfectly matching layers and other boundary conditions and sources, um, and then doing the simulation. Now, the next result, so the idea is that you, you look at these, these, uh, this simulation, you say, OK, well, you know, this looks like a, a, a splitter, and I'm happy with it. The next step is uh, creating S parameters for this, which requires doing, in this case, for the device, doing three separate simulations. And so this is what's being simulated right now. You can see it's doing three jobs. These three jobs essentially consist of injection on port one, 
then it does injection on port two, well, and then it does the injection the on port three. What? Let's see if I can. Can I mute one of the microphones? I, I'm hearing. Let's see which one could it be. Let me just mute. Okay. Um, so, so the, the result is shown here. This is the, the, the visualizer essentially brings up uh, the S parameters. Um, you can see how many S parameters we have here. We have a total of nine S parameters. So this is a three by three matrix. Um, and uh, right now it's plotting the, the, the real value of the S parameters. If you want to look at the, uh, the magnitude, um, then let's say, for example, S21, we need to switch this to absolute value squared. So the S parameters are in terms of electric field. If you want to know how much power is transmitted, you look at absolute value squared. And this tells you that this the splitter that I designed has a 25% uh, splitting efficiency or insertion loss, essentially. OK, so, uh, so, so this, uh, these S parameters, uh, now you have a 9 by 9 matrix. Um, and this is essentially similar to the unit that I showed in the, uh, in the online course for the Y branch, except this one is a little bit more generic in the sense that it can take any arbitrary geometry. Is um, K-Layout will open interconnect, um, hopefully. Let's see if it works. Yes, OK. So uh, what K-Layout just did was it took the polygons that are drawn in K-Layout and created a little icon. So here you can see the, uh, the icon that was created to represent uh, our component. Um, and inside this component, I think I can open this, expand. What it did was it created this S parameter object. So I showed you how to import the data files into this component. And so essentially, I've just automated that process where the S parameter file created by FGD is loaded into this S parameter object in interconnect. Um, and now we have a component uh, that was added into our custom library. So under on the far right in the element library, custom. Sciapic user, you can see I've created the. And what I can do is I can now drag and drop and, and start creating my own interferometers with my own splitter if I want. Um, and I can do, I can characterize this. So if you look in the eBeam library where the vote version number is, I put an optical network analyzer in here to make it more convenient. So I can connect, for example, uh, my, my output to the splitter. And the inputs here, for example, let's just characterize the S21 of the device. And if I run the simulation, I should get something similar to what I, what I saw in FTD. Namely, uh, you can see my insertion loss of the device is 6 to 7 dB, as, as we described earlier. Um, so this device, actually, I should probably also show you the back reflections, because that's, all, that's very relevant for, uh, for the kind of things that we're doing here that might give us effects. Uh, so now I'm monitoring the reflection from the input port. And you can see here it says gain is minus 35. So this tells us that the reflectivity, um, the, the optical return loss of the component is on the order of minus 30, minus 35 uh, decibels. So it's not too bad. It's uh, at least from that perspective. The insertion loss, of course, is, is atrocious, but you know, it illustrates the concept. And if you want to take this further in terms of the, 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 the default course project that we have where um, you're building an interferometer, um, you can either go back in K layout, which was what we're going to be doing next week. You're going to be drawing, um, you're going to be doing something that's going to look like, uh, let me just show you an example. Um, you might draw an interferometer that looks like this, and you're going to create waveguides. Just quickly sketch what the interferometer might look like. Ignoring some of these errors. So your interferometer essentially will look like two waveguides connecting the splitter. So um, what I'll show you next week is that you can actually simulate this structure. Uh, there's another menu item here called simulation, circuit simulation of the numerical interconnect. Um, now, we haven't covered this yet, so I don't want to confuse things too much. But since we've talked about how to do circuit simulations and interconnect, let me show you how you would do this here. You could drag and drop all the, all the components in here and build your interferometer uh, like so. 
So for example, you might have 100 microns, you might have the other one as, uh, let's see, where are my properties? I might make this to be 200 microns. And um, now I can wire my interferometer. Okay, so uh, so we have our, a mixture of library components that are provided in the, in the PDK, as well as our own components. And hopefully this should give us the interference spectrum. Okay, fantastic, it's working, yay. <laughs> this, this is always great when things work, uh, especially live. So now we have, we've built an interferometer using our custom component, as well as the, the waveguides in the library. Um, and then this is how, um, we are going to be assessing the quality of the performance of the, of the components that people design. Specifically, we're going to build an interferometer. We can check to see what the extinction ratio is, so we can see how well, uh, how even the splitting ratio is. So you can see this component has a very good splitting ratio, so it has a very high extinction ratio. Um, and then, of course, we can look at the insertion loss and see uh, how much insertion loss we have here. Um, I'm hoping most people who will be entering the competition will do much better than the 6 dB that I'm showing here, um, in which case uh, this insertion loss is much more difficult to measure. So uh, the layouts that we're going to be doing for that, we're going to cascade many, many of these in order to try to accumulate the loss as much as possible. So, um, so yeah, so that's what I wanted to show. So that's, um, th that's essentially a, uh, a, an easy way of starting with a component that you think is pretty good and then and allowing you to do the component simulations, circuit simulations, and then connecting the layout to the circuit simulations as well. So 